We're going to be creating a material information report here. So we're under the resources tab and have a material layer open. Um, just to create the report, we're going to go ahead and click on the reports button and select create. The type material is already going to be selected and we're just going to enter a name, the title, which will be material information. And we're going to keep the selected button on uh, multiple records on each page. Once the web designer is open, we're going to go over to the insert tab. We're going to grab a text box in order to create our title. I'm going to go ahead and drag it out. Since it's the title and we're centering text, we're going to need it to be a string. So we're going to put quotes. We're going to go ahead and put material information and the quotes, and that'll create the string. And we can go ahead and select OK. We can then edit it just like it's text. So we can use the center button and also move it up to 20.5. Then we can go ahead and adjust the box to the size we would like. And then we can hit save. And then we can come back to the designer and see what it displays. Next, we're going to be entering in our data. So we're going to go back to the insert tab, go to the report container, Go ahead and just draw a box of what we want here. That's about the space I want. I'm going to go ahead and click table. Then it's going to ask me what the data source is that I'm going to be wanting. I'm going to scroll down until I find materials. Right here, and I'll click OK. I'm then going to be able to select the actual fields that I want. I can just double click on them to send them over, which is going to be description, entry date, ID, inventory method, and manufacturer. So I'll scroll down to find manufacturer. Once we're over here, we can go ahead and order them. So we can put ID at the top, and that can be followed by the entry date. Inventory method is also going to move up. And then we'll make manufacturer one above description, and we'll be all set. So then we can click OK. As you can see, the report container now has our data. Now you can see it's kind of clustered, so we can go ahead and make this landscape by clicking project and selecting landscape. It's going to ask us if it wants to move our rows for us, our columns, and we can go and select OK. And you can see that moved, however, the title did not. So we can actually make that fit the way we want. We can even line it up on this end as well. And we can go ahead and save. We're going to go back over to our Chrome and refresh. And you can see it gets cut off about halfway down. That's because we made our report container only that big. Um, then we can click on different pages here and continue to see what's going on. We're going to add a filter now to limit our data entries that we get. And we're going to be wanting it to only select the ones that we use the checkbox for. Um, so if we go into the report parameters, you can see that there's a function called CGOids. The CGOids is a function for you guys. It's a parameter that is used to use the whole selected by. So if you're in a detail view, you can use the CGOids. Or if you're wanting in the list view to select the checkboxes and then run a report on what you have checked, um, that's also how you use the CGOids. So we're going to go ahead and select the tables. I'm going to go ahead and select the table here. And we're going to come down to filter. I'm going to select formula. Now, what we're looking for for it to be selected by is we're going to type in materials.oid. And we're going to make sure that equals at CGOids. And then we can go ahead and click OK and select save. Now when I come back over here and I hit select refresh, you're not going to get any data. Why? Because I never selected anything. So if I exit out, come back over here, I select just these three. I'll run the report. And you can see that the three actually did populate. Going back over to the web designer, 
we're going to actually enter in our logo now. Um, how to enter a picture. I'm actually going to drag him down. I'm going to enter in our logo right here. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and click insert and grab picture. I'm going to go ahead and give it a nice big room here. It's going to say file a formula. I'm going to go ahead and click file since I have this document. I'm going to go to my desktop where it's located. And I can go ahead and pull it up. And it fits right in there. I can save it. Come back to Chrome and refresh. And you can see that our logo did get inserted in. We're going to jump back over to the web designer now. And we're going to enter a sort and then also a column. So now that we're selected on our table, we can go ahead and apply a sort by clicking on the three dots. And it'll bring up a dialog box here. And you can select what you want in, in what order. So plus sign is ascending, minus is descending. So in this case, what we're actually going to go do is find, <clears throat> sorry about that. We're going to find the entry date by ascending order there. You can double click. You can use that little carrot, um, the arrow to send it over and that'll all work. You can select OK. Jumping back to the designer, we're now going to add a column. So in the right pane, you can see that there's variables in fields here. What we're going to do is find materials, actually. So we're going to scroll down here. And find materials, and we can go ahead and expand that. Once it's expanded, we're actually going to look for quantity on hand. And we just need to click them and drag them next to description. We can actually go ahead and just let them drop. We can say yes, and you can see it moves over. Now, obviously, what we can do is we can click and drag our columns here and make them the appropriate width so everything gets seen. Next thing we're going to do is save and go back over to Chrome and refresh. And you can see that our quantity on hand now actually is displaying and it also has our total here at the end. Jumping back over to the web designer, we're going to do some formatting. So first thing I'm going to do guys is show you over here in the project. You can see we have a text and a table and a picture and um, we can actually name these guys and move them around. So if you wanted to name the picture our logo, we can actually move that up to say, hey, that's at the top. Our text can be our header. You can move him as well. You can even name the table, say material. You can remove the whole report container up as well. You put him in the right spot. Next thing we're going to do is in the header line, you can see that there's underscores for the field names here, guys. You can go ahead and double click to bring it up. And you can see there's the entry date inventory method. If you don't want those, you can simply click on the header. You can click right there and delete in space. You could double click on it and it'll bring up the actual box that you can go ahead and get rid of it. Since there's strings, you don't actually need it. You can have spaces in there, and that's okay. That looks like that is all of them. The next thing that we're going to do is actually open up the quantity on hand materials guy. And what we're going to do is be able to show its unit as well. So the each court number, um, anything like that. We're going to go ahead and open him up. In order to do that, actually the quantity on hand unit is a string. So we have to make it both a string. So we can do add the to string function. Plus a space. Plus materials.
plus displays, plus materials, dark clarity on hand unit. Then we can go ahead and select OK, select OK, save. And when we come back over here, guys, we'll refresh and you can see it says each court, each and each. Um, the bottom one obviously does not actually have a unit because the footer one we didn't adjust for it and two you have eaches and quarts and boxes all merged together so you don't really have a universal um, label there for the ending. We're going to jump back over to the web designer. We're going to do one more thing. We're going to go ahead and open up the table again by clicking on it and we're going to go to the footer line. We're going to go ahead and delete out these unnecessary spaces. And we're going to keep one. So the reason we're keeping one is just because we're going to change it. So if we enter in, guys, we go ahead and type in total quantity on hand. We can select OK. With this guy, we can go ahead and scroll down. You can see alignment is to the left. We're actually going to make him to the right. And that's the left, so we should be good there. Then we can go ahead and actually make it line up with where we want. So this extra space doesn't matter. All that matters is that we have the total quantity on hand matched up with the quantity on hand. We can go ahead and save that. Come back over here, refresh. And you can see total quantity of hand is 424.